Yeah, I'm like 99% sure some of these pictures I have can land me in like a communist prison or something. <laughs> I'm like not even kidding you. What is going on guys? It's your boy Jacob here. Uh, hope you guys are doing well with quarantine. I, Jesus, it has been a rough ride, but you know what? I think we're finally finding a flow here. One video popped up as always in, in the recommended. It mentioned strolling around and touring Havana, Cuba. And it reminded me of my time in Havana. Mind you, this was before I took photography seriously. So my edits in Lightroom were absolute trash, if they had any edits at all. So don't roast me. I understand they suck. Some of them. Some of them are fire. But anyway, before we start, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could just like, comment, subscribe, all that cool stuff. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, but yeah, on to the video. One of the cool things that happened on this trip was I really tried to make sure that I got a first-hand account of what happens to these locals, and I wrote it all in this book right here. I have some weird secrets and some weird things that I'm pretty sure I probably should know uh, regarding the rations and like their 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 secret ways of making money, but uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Once you get there, vibes are like you feel the 50s, 60s vibes. Like it is literally, you are literally in a time warp. Everything is old and retro. Um, it has been done up by these crazy good mechanics in Cuba because obviously they can't import any any cars. So they gotta deal with what they got, you know, from, from the 50s and the 60s. So a lot of these cars look actually super dope on the outside, but are like, <laughs> barely hold it on on the inside it's pretty crazy and so here's one of the one of the taxis that we we drove it looks like one of those you know 60s hippies you know uh woodstock kind of kind of cars throughout our, our journey there like kind of driving in, in in the taxi and stuff like that we kind of obviously able to see all the cars see the architecture a lot of it was really eye-opening you know buildings that you know had yet hadn't been renovated in years like you see here, pictures and, and murals and, and writings of people that are that were pro Fidel Castro and you know pro uh, Jose Marti and like all these guys that, that started the revolution. And it, it's really cool to see because it's it's blatantly there. They're, they're not scared to hide it. They're they're they you know write it everywhere. You get a history lesson as you walk through, both through the economy, through the people you talk to. You know, everyone has a story there. And it, it, it's really interesting. In the Airbnb I found I was looking through like the drawers or whatever, I don't know what I was doing. And I found a, a book that was in Russian. And it, I didn't know at the time, I was like, oh, like I wonder what language this is. Cause like it had like a doctor on it, right? And so clearly it's in Russian, can't read it. Um, so then I, I think later on in the night, we, we tried to watch TV and everything was in Russian. Like, I don't know if you learned it in history or you know where you've learned it, but this is not an exaggeration. Like the Russians were actually like had a presence in Cuba, and it clearly it clearly showed, which was totally dope. I wish I had a video of the TV, but uh, it was it was actually pretty crazy to see like firsthand. So kind of to clarify things, we didn't kind of go we didn't go there for tourism. We kind of went there to go see the family friends that we know in that neighborhood. There's obviously a lot of poverty, and there's there's a lot of little kids that don't have much, and so we decided. Uh, in hindsight, it actually does not seem like a great idea at all because this can draw, this probably drew so much attention. But we threw a little kind of uh, party of sorts with like a pinata, a bunch of candy and a cake uh, for all the kids in the neighborhood to kind of enjoy and to have like all the families come together. They don't have these sorts of cool things like, you know, cake and and balloons and stuff, you know. I, for my aunt's birthday, it was her birthday toward the end of our, our stay they blew up balloons with condoms. Like they use condoms as balloons because they, they don't have access to like simple things like balloons, you know? Um, so we threw a little party, had all the little kids there and it was, it was really cool to see. Aside from obviously seeing the family that we have, it was really cool to see um, the the camaraderie of all the, 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 the neighborhood kids and the, and the families and stuff. So it was really nice to, to kind of capture that and capture those moments. And after that, we kind of just explored. So we went from kind of like the, the countryside to the more touristy side. So here we, you see, you kind of, we kind of went to Havana. We went to, uh, again, like the retro-y places that had some of the cars and stuff.
when we went to this area. Somehow, I don't know how I did this, but I managed to like sneak through and slip through and I went into their rations building where they give the rations to the, uh, the locals and to the community uh, based on like their little rations card that they get, I guess, per month. And here, I took a picture of the blackboard that has the amount allotted to each family. Not to each family, but to like certain families. So if it's like a four person family, you get this much rice. If it's a five person family, you get this this many beans, right? And here are the, you know, the tally marks of how much they get and the actual rice that they give out to the families. And so I am pretty sure I was not supposed to be in there. Not entirely sure, but it's a very big possibility. All I know is when I left customs for leaving Cuba, they checked my camera, they checked the inside of my camera, they took the lens off to see if I had anything inside of the camera. So that was that was a little, <laughs> but we're here, we're, we, we're alive. So I remember talking to this taxi driver, it was me and my aunt, obviously we speak Spanish, so we, we were able to talk to him. Uh, this Toward the end of the trip, he was able to kind of get the lowdown on us and know that we weren't, you know, narcs, because they, they do obviously appear on the corners and, and, you know, tell the government and kind of rat on the citizens and stuff. It's actually their job. He said that there were some people that they go to this one hotel specifically for for outside Cubans, not people that aren't Cuban. So the taxi drivers or whoever's looking to make, you know, a quick buck or some money, they take rum or alcohol from the hotel and they sell it. That's basically how they make ends meet. You know what I mean? They make more money doing that than they do, you know, at their job. Some of these people are doctors, some of these people are lawyers, some of these people are you know, trained engineers, but they make more money either being a taxi driver, selling rum, or you know, selling newspapers. Being in a communist society, there's not so much you can do. And so there's some that are really mad that they're limited, their opportunities are limited, and those are the ones that really yearn to go to, you know, America or Canada um, to kind of maximize their potential. But then there's the other, the flip side, where the people that were, you know, kind of poor, and you know, the families that were poor, they were happy that they were able to finally get to that, you know, median line right so it was good for the people that were do weren't doing so well but also on the flip side the people that were kind of doing well it kind of brought them down a bit and this is really interesting dynamic because depending on who you talk to in, in, in Cuba um, not so much Havana but you know the other places you kind of get the sense that there's kind of like a dichotomy between the people that like communism the people that hate communism and I honestly truly that that was pretty fascinating and you kind of see it in these pictures too and again one one of the main things that was kind of really you know eye-opening was his last point he said he you know aspired to move to Montreal Canada he said when he went there he hated it but he only went there because I think his his wife was a, a chef or, or a nurse or something in Canada he said that at every street corner he saw people doing drugs, selling drugs, or ODing on drugs. But, and I even saw this for a fact, in Cuba it is crystal clean, there's no crime, mostly because there's, you know, very harsh penalties to the Cuban citizens, especially if they do anything against, you know, like a tourist. Because a lot of their money comes from tourism. And if you do anything to kind of harm that, it's a huge hammer on, you know, on you if you do anything to kind of harm that. The point he made was a lot of people from outside of Cuba kind of look at Cuba as this third world country that's, you know, dirty, impoverished, and, you know, riddled with, with, with crime and stuff. He was kind of making the point that he would rather live in a, in a country that was super poor with no crime and happiness rather than live in a Western country, such as Canada or, or United States, with a bunch of money and a bunch of opportunities, but riddled with drugs and crime. I honestly think I learned more there than I have on any other trip. So, you know, just figured I'd kind of flash, forward, flash back to, you know, some happier times where we could travel and do some cool things not inside of our you know apartments or houses again if you like the video make sure you subscribe thumbs up comment all that cool stuff till next time love you guys see you see you stay safe take care peace